Hello and welcome to this week's uh, personal online tutor tutorial. This week I thought we would talk about how to add shadows to your Photoshop composition. I see a lot of uh, compositing with Photoshop where it doesn't really look like the objects exist within the environment and part of that reason is that whoever um, created the work didn't really add shadows and without appropriate shadows uh, your work tends to look kind of flat or kind of kind of like a puppet show where everything like they're flats on a stage or something like that so what we're gonna do is learn how to add uh, shadows to work that we composite to make it look more like a realistic scene So, uh, I thought in honor of the summer, the first thing we're going to do is uh, work with a beach landscape. So, within the show notes, uh, there's a listing of where you can get the files. Uh, the file we're going to open up is called Beach. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a volleyball or sorry, a beach ball to uh, this scene and then add a realistic shadow to make it look like the volleyball actually exists within the scene. So first thing we're going to do is I have a picture of a volleyball and I'm going to select this volleyball. Um, there's a couple ways you could do this. Uh, you could either use the quick mask tool, quick selection tool, or the magic wand. So I'm going to use the magic wand because uh, I'm going to do a little technique where I'm going to select the background and then inverse to get the actual object. So instead of trying to highlight the object here, I'm going to try to highlight all the background since I have a consistent colored background. I'm going to select the background and you see how it's selecting everything except for the volleyball. And I'm going to go to select and then inverse. And that gives me a nice easy selection of the object. So I'm going to copy this with command C or uh, control C if you have a PC and bring it into my beach scene I'm getting a little bit of a halo effect on my object so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this by adding a mask so first thing I'm gonna do is uh, control click on the um, thumbnail of my beach ball layer so Control click and I'm going to choose the option called select pixels. So you can see how that selects the pixels. We're going to add a quick layer mask by going to layer, layer mask and I'm going to go down to the option that says reveal selection and you can see it makes an automatic uh, layer mask for me. So when we're dealing with layer masks white is the uh, visible area black is invisible and to get rid of some of this halo what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a little bit of a blur on this that's gonna kinda smudge the edges and make it look a little bit more uh, blended in a little bit more to the background so I'm gonna go to filter blur Gaussian blur and I'm just gonna play around that's pretty good see how the edges are getting a little bit less um, noticeable. You don't want to go too much because then you start kind of getting this weird transparency but just a little bit. I'm going to go with maybe like a s s radius of six and hit OK. So here I have this beach ball but it doesn't really look like it exists within this beach scene and part of the issue is that there's no um, shadow for my object and whenever you're dealing with um, a realistic world there's always going to be shadows of some form, whether they're faint or strong or long or short. In this case, uh, I'm going to pretend like we are dealing with a noonday sun. And when you deal with a noonday sun, what you're getting is you're getting a sun that's about at 90 degrees and it's focusing its rays down on your object. So what happens is that the shadow of your object tends to be fairly small and it tends to be directly below the object. So we're going to create a noonday sun scenario. So the first thing I'm going to do is 
between um, my beach ball layer and my background, I'm going to make a new layer by clicking on the create new layer option. Click and I'm going to go to my marquee tools, hold down and I'm going to select the second option which is the circular marquee tool or the elliptical. I always call it the circular. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag out a oval style shape. A little, not too overly, not too long. And I'm going to move that directly below my object here. And I'm going to fill this with black. So I'm going to set my color to black. Grab my gradient tool, fill it in and you can see how I have this black circle. So now it doesn't really look very realistic. So part of having a shadow is shadows are kind of very fuzzy along the edges. So I'm going to uh, create a little bit of a fuzzy edge by going to filter and then blur and then Gaussian blur. And you can see how that's going to soften my edges here. By softening the edges it makes my shadow look more realistic. So I'm going to actually ramp mine up pretty high, maybe about 22. So already my shadow is looking better, looking more realistic. Um, my shadow is a little bit strong, so I might uh, lower the opacity just a little bit. Play around with that. Take it down to maybe about 75. The last thing I want to do is shadows uh, are always strongest or darkest at the center of your object and they kind of go softer and softer. So we're actually going to apply a simple um, layer mask just so that we can soften the edges here to make it sort of fade out, which is the way a real shadow actually would. So I'm going to go to layer layer mask, reveal all, and it's going to start me with a white layer mask, meaning nothing is invisible. I'm going to go to my paint bucket, hold it down, and we're going to select the gradient tool. And I'm going to go to make sure your colors are uh, white and black. And I'm going to click here to set up our um, gradient and just make sure that your gradient is going from white to black. If you have other colors, you can click on these stops and you know reset the colors to the appropriate colors. But you want to make sure that these are set up between white and black. Now that we have that, what we're going to do is we are going to go to our gradient option. So we have different types of gradients that we can use. I'm going to choose the second one which is the radial gradient. And by using this what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to start with white in the center and it's going to go out to black. And as it goes to black the shadow will become less and less transparent thus creating a fading out effect. So I'm just going to click. That's a little too much there but play around, apply it multiple times. So you can see how, there we go. So I'm getting getting it where it's stronger in the center and then it kind of fades out. If it's a little too faint for you, you can always go back to opacity and then kind of raise it up a little bit. Now that I've applied my shadow, you can kind of see where this, the edges are still coming back. So I might go in and I'm just going to use a smudge tool and make sure it's kind of the appropriate size. You don't want it too big or too small. And just kind of literally uh, smudge my layer mask just to kind of get rid of that sharp edge. Because that sharp edge is really what's making it not look realistic, making it look like it's you know kind of like a sticker or cardboard cutout, which is not what we want. Um, I'm just going to play around. Get rid of that sharp edge. Okay. And there you go. So I have my beach ball, and you know, I have a nice this realistic shadow here, 
definitely grounds my object and makes it feel like it's part of um, the background. No more, cause I believe. A WYSIWYG, or a what you see is what you get, is a type of application where the content from the application is very similar to how the final output will look. In the design world, the use of the term WYSIWYG usually refers to an HTML web creation software such as Adobe Dreamweaver or Mozilla Composer. However, beyond HTML web creation software, a WYSIWYG can also refer to desktop publishing software such as Adobe InDesign or even photo editing software such as Adobe Photoshop. And that's your graphic design term of the week.